Assalamu alaikum everyone and today we are going to be talking about molecular orbitals. Now when we think of atoms, we think of little ball thingies with sticks for the electrons that make the bonds and you guessed it it's highly inaccurate and as we know at all these aren't just balls and sticks actually the nucleus doesn't look like a ball when you get to the more unstable atoms anyway and we know about atomic orbitals and we know that they aren't electrons themselves they are actually possible electron locations and i've covered a lot about electron configuration and atomic orbitals in this video we also know that an atom can take one of its atomic orbitals and hybridize them into hybrid atomic orbitals now i've talked about the changing structure of atom um, hybrid atomic orbitals in my sn2 video where i talked about the molecule changing from sp3 hybridized to sp2 hybridized well i didn't explain how this works so here i am now, hybrid atomic orbitals are the orbitals that make a covalent bond. Let's start with a molecule of hydrogen. Here's a diagram for hydrogen. Now, to form the sigma bonds, the, these will overlap and make one molecule which both electrons will reside in. A hydrogen molecule sit at a lower energy level than two lone hydrogen atoms because of the electrostatic interaction between each electron and the opposite nucleus. This is why hydrogen spontaneously forms diatomic orbitals, but the number of orbitals must be conserved. So when two atomic orbitals come together Form molecular orbitals they will form one bonding orbital and one anti bonding orbital electrons in a covalent bond will sit in the lower energy bonding orbital as as any orbital can hold up to two electrons but if one electron were to become excited it will jump from the Sigma or the bonding orbital to the sigma star or anti-bonding orbital now this is where hybridization comes into play if an atom is participating in say a lot of bonds then it will utilize its hybrid atomic orbitals to form them if say in CH4, carbon is making four bonds, which is what CH4 is. It takes its 2s orbital and all of its 2p orbital and hybridizes them. To create four sp3 hybridized hybrid atomic orbitals. Now what happens here is the 2s orbital will promote its electron to the 2p orbital and they will hybridize with like energy or degenerate forming sp3 hybridized orbitals now every energy level has one s orbitals three p orbitals and five d orbital and i'm not going to talk about the f orbital the number of bonds an atom can participate determines the number of atomic bonds that needs to be hybridized to make hybrid atomic orbitals to generate bonds 
Now let's look at an sp3 carbon, which we just looked at. It typically participates in four sigma bonds, just like methane. But carbon can also be sp2 or sp hybridized. Now the sp hybrid sp2 hybridized orbitals have three electron domains which might happen if it has a bond to something. Let's look at C2H4. Now what happens here is just like methane, the carbon will promote one of its electrons but there will be one unhybridized orbitals and that orbital will make the pi bond by overlapping with the other unhybridized orbital. Now this is the second bond of the molecule and these overlap in part perpendicular fashion by the way. Same goes for C2H2 which is a linear molecule with carbons having a triple bond with them but there will be two unhybridized orbitals but, and they will make two pi bonds and one sigma bond which gives three bonds which is why it's a triple bond. Sometimes we have to generate orbital diagrams for a molecule. Say a molecule of H2, there is one electron in this orbital and the other in the other orbital of the other atom and when they hybridize they form they have two electrons in the bonding orbital now the bond order is the number of bonding electrons minus the number of anti-bonding electrons divided by two so the bo bond order of hydrogen is 2 minus 0 divided by 2 which is 1. That's why hydrogen has only one bond. Let's look at a more complicated one like oxygen. Yes, this diagram is scary and crazy. So the 1s orbitals of both oxygen atoms are full so the bonding orbital is full and same for the 2s so that orbital is also full and the 2p has misses four bonds before getting full so we can we can fill in the and counting out the bonding orbitals and the anti-bonding orbitals electrons we can find that the bonding order is two that's why oxygen has a double bond like this we can predict the bonding behavior of any you know, two given atoms. Let's look at an even scarier diagram, a diagram of nitrogen. Now I'm not going to go over in detail as if you saw my hydrogen oxygen part then you'll know pretty much what's going on and once we count we find that the bonding order is 10 minus 4 divided by 2, which is 3. So that's why nitrogen has a triple bond. So that's a lot about valence bond theory and atomic orbitals. And with this, hopefully you have a better understanding about atomic orbitals than the mathematical part that... I haven't really explained too much in my previous video though you should check it out because that's going to be the first thing you will tackle so that's all there is to it sorry if this was an extremely long video it's just atomic orbitals is a really complicated topic and we have more for later So that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed and learned something from the video, please like and subscribe for more videos about math and science. And if anyone else is confused about this similar topic, then please share the video to that person.
And thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.